Hello, this is Steve Hill with Red Transit Consultants here to discuss the Pipe Network Productivity Tools version 1.001, 1 uh, the updates that were rolled out in this release. There's a few new product version or command versions, and then as well as a few uh, command enhancements uh, that I just wanted to cover in a video here. So to start out, uh, the ribbon looks a little bit different than what was rolled out in the first release. Uh, we now have an about button and a help button, so if you want to access to the help file, there's a quick way to get into that. Um, and the about button will just show you what version you're running, some other links of uh, where our apps are at. Um, <clears throat> and then from there, I've kind of reorganized a couple of the ribbons to move some buttons around. and uh, Not too much, but um, cleaned up a few things, had some suggestions from some users out there to just simplify... Uh, the way that the buttons were laid out on the screen, so I felt that they were worthwhile improvements, so went ahead and made them, so I appreciate the feedback. <clears throat> to start out, one of the, uh, this version includes a, a few new commands, so uh, modify part descriptions is a new command, uh, daylight pipe at surface, and then label pipe elevation. Those are all three new commands added out um, in this release. And then there was a few uh, minor bug fixes that were rolled out that are listed out in the um, on the App Store, as well as some command enhancements. So one of the command enhancements I want to talk about is the ability to filter your selection. So a number of the commands, if I just run swap multiple parts, um, you'll see you you'll have this selection method to choose all parts within the network or you could manually pick random ones on the screen within the same network or you can do this path option where you pick a, a upstream and downstream structure and collects everything in between um, but what do you do with that selection once you have that um, and that's uh, a new feature added in is the ability to filter that selection by the uh, part size name so um, let's say you're given a pipe network and you've been tasked with going through that pipe network and swapping out all 24 inch concrete pipe over to um, 12 inch concrete pipe, let's say. And so how long would that task take you? Um, depends on how many pipes there are. Um, with the out of the box, as you, as you probably already know, you, you have to hit swap part you have to go through and do it manually one by one. Um, so with the swap multiple parts, you do have the ability to still do it faster. Um, but furthermore, if we want to swap the entire network and just find all 24 inch, this filter parts creates that um, ability to manage your, your selection that much easier. So if we go ahead and hit, just hit network for this, but it does work for any um, selection method we'll hit network and then the next prompt is going to be would you like to um, filter the selection um, go ahead and say yes on this and it's going to show you your current selection so within your selection of that network that we selected there's 10 structures and they're all eccentric structure 48 inch um, manholes and as you pick them it's going to tell you how many it found filtered so we can see the the pipe, there's 12 inch, 18 inch, and 24 inch. Um, there's total nine pipes in the, in the network. So if I select 12 inch, it's showing that it's filtered it down to two, or you know you can switch through. So in this case, we want to switch out all 24 inch to 12 inch. So we'll say filtered selection count. And I'm gonna just deselect this guy. <clears throat> and that's done just by holding down control and selecting and just typical Windows um, features there. So we've only selected the 24 inch concrete pipe, so now it's going to apply this filter to my selection and reduce uh, my selection. So basically I'm not picking any structures, so it's going to remove the structures out of the selection set. So I'll say apply filter, and so we want six pipes total is what should, what should come out. So you come over to your swap multiple parts and you can see that you've got those six pipes and then we can just go to concrete pipe, 12 inch, swap out, and we're done. So that makes that task really easy to go through um, and 
and swap that swap that out by filtering selection that way. So that that is available within all of the commands that have the network multiple or path op option. I just went ahead and added that in for anything. So if you're renaming parts, anything like that, and you want to filter by filter your selection, you can do so. Um, modifying part references, all that stuff, uh, everything's got it. <clears throat> That's one big feature. Um, another big feature is um, had some suggestions to re recall what you had previously picked. So if I pick on each command, if I pick network here, or if I let's say I pick multiple. And go ahead and hit something and just to kind of escape out of it. And I rerun swap multiple parts. You can see it's defaulting to multiple to what you had last picked. So it does remember your keyword selection. That always that does dial down to your filtering and all that too. Um, so the keyword selections are now being stored in the memory. So um, so that's a new feature. Um, those are the big new features that are for the existing commands. I will say the label pipe crossings dialog has changed. So when we, uh, in the previous version, when you ran this command, you would automatically get a dialog, and you'd have to go through and select your options. Now, when you run this command, it starts with a, uh, a keyword selection, and I did this um, as a suggestion to help speed up the workflow because going through a dialog every time is kind of um, can be time consuming so if you if you just you know you select plan profile or both um, and if you want to see the dialog you just click settings so um, I put everything into the settings dialog this way also gave the ability to label um, what you're uh, listing here so if you're doing the, the you know the crown what's your abbreviations that are pulling in and things like that so um, <clears throat> so when it does label the invert, it, here's your abbreviation of what it's going to put in there. Um, invert with the wall thickness, um, and I just put some placeholders in there for now. If you want to change them out, change them out to what you want. Um, so that was an, that was a new update with the label pipe crossings. Dynamic capability and all that still stays uh, in place. And the Y buttons changed a little bit. I did add the update and the ability to remove the X data. I didn't add the delete all Y connections because I figured that's not something people would want to really be doing. Um, but to remove the uh, dynamic update link out off the pipes uh, is there. So if you want to remove that X data that runs that update, um, you can do so. <coughs> so let's talk about some of the new commands. Um, modify part descriptions. This one came to me from a, from a user out there that um, I think a lot of people are using uh, their labels reference the part description. So in this case, if I you know, was to click this pipe and you know, my part library in this drawing doesn't isn't set up to read the size, but um, let's say if I say 24 inch concrete pipe, that label reads the description. So, um, and I think a lot of people are using that uh, feature as well. Uh, you may actually be referencing the actual size, but if you want this to say something unique, um, people are using the description for that. So, uh, the modify part descriptions gives you the ability to multi modify multiple parts at once, um, based uh, again um, by selecting a network, a multiple, or a path option. And then you can modify all their uh, descriptions all at one time. So let's go ahead and run this. And then I'm just going to run the entire network. And again, you get the ability to filter by selection. So if I wanted to go through and take all the 12 inch pipe and I wanted that label to say something different, I could do that. Let's go ahead and filter. And we'll say I want all the 12 inch pipe. Say apply. And then you can, out of that selection, you can include structures. In this case, we didn't. We don't have structures. Um, but uh, here, you just check include pipes. Here's the description, so you can say um, whatever you want to say here. Proposed 12-inch RCP, let's say, and we'll say apply. And the pipe descriptions are updated, and you can see all the the labels that reference that are done. So. Um, that's a nice 
feature to to be able to make that adjustment. Again, structures will work as well if you want to go through and modify your structure descriptions. Uh, label pipe elevation is a new one, and I didn't set this up as dynamic yet. Um, I'm working on some some tweaks and to make that happen. But this is a very useful um, tool for when you want to label. Uh, an elevation along the pipe at any point along that pipe. Um, so even just in design in general it's very useful. Um, so if I want to look at this pipe and I know that let's say I have a utility line crossing here and I want to know you know the elevation at this uh, location. So I can run this label pipe elevation and go ahead and, and click and as I drag, it's showing me the invert elevation along that pipe, uh, dynamic to the actual uh, pipe invert that are, that's assigned. So at any point along here, you can get that information on that pipe. And if I just uh, click a location, like let's say roughly right here, it's going to go ahead and place that. Um, and my my drawing scale is a little, little bit large here, but going to go ahead and place a multi-liter in that you can have labeled there. Um, so again, this is not, th there's no update mode set to it. Uh, that is something I'm working on, but um, for right now, it's, it's uh, you would just delete it and replace it. Uh, but if you run this command again, and let's go to settings. <coughs> so again, you get the ability to control Invert centerline crown. So if you want to, you know, if you want to view the crown elevation here, um, do you want to label a surface elevation with that? So if we say the surface elevation, let's label to the outer wall, and then again some ability to control abbreviations with that. Uh, what's being placed? So if we say OK, we select our pipe, and we go ahead and start dragging. So it's it's using that abbreviation, the crown wall elevation. So if I pick this spot, and because I had picked surface, I can now pick the surface, and it's also going to give me the ability to label the surface elevation at that location. Um, so you can see that gets placed in there. <coughs> so that's a pretty useful command. Um, and I've like to mention that in the label pipe crossings in the settings here we also have the ability to label the surface elevation at the crossing so if you pick your two pipes that cross if, if this is checked it's then going to ask you to select the surface and it's going to also place the same label for what the surface elevation is at that location um, so that's uh, that was another feature that the user had asked for um, so that is the label pipe elevation. Let's switch drawings now. And so what I want to show here is uh, the last command that was added is this daylight pipe at the surface. Um, so if you're working on, let's say I've got this pipe that's set at 2%, it's sloping in this direction. Uh, if I go to Object Viewer and take a look at this pipe, it is in a berm situation, but um, you know, it could be a ditch. I just felt this was a good um, demonstration here, just a uh, drastic change to show how it works. But <clears throat> you can see the pipe coming out of the berm, and you can see the other end of it underneath coming through the surface here. So if I want to know where this pipe at 2% at the current elevations on the invert, centerline, or crown, whichever you choose, uh, where it actually daylights out the surface, you can do that with this command. So it allows you to trim the pipe to that location or extend it to where it would daylight. So if I take a look at this, this is great for culverts and things like that. I just have a single pipe here that there aren't any structures on this pipe. It's just a single pipe that I'm just, uh, just had placed in the drawing. So if I hit daylight pipe to surface, you select it by the end that you want to trim or extend. So I pick this end, and then you pick the surface, and the pipe gets adjusted. And notice it stayed at 
and that is dynamic that is a dynamic label to the pipe so if I look at the pipe properties you can see it's two percent um, and there's one more setting here if I go to daylight pipe to surface and say settings you can control the invert crown center line for that um, so if you want it depending on where you want it to, to daylight at um, you can control that and we'll go ahead and do daylight pipe to surface the other direction here. And so it extends out at the alignment using the invert elevation um, to where it would daylight out the surface. So if I uh, view this now in object viewer. now see the pipe coming out the surface on either end so um, so it's gone through and computed that for us so uh, those are the the major updates to the app there's a few other uh, minor tweaks but really appreciate all the feedback uh, from everybody that's using it um, keep it coming and I'll see if I can keep offering more solutions for y'all thanks for watching